The Man with the Yin Yang Eyes, Episode 1 My name is Lucius Gregory. I was initially an ordinary young man, living an ordinary life. Every day passed normally, everything was normal, until one day. One day, I learned that I was not ordinary. I was a little different from normal people. Every time I walk in the street at night, sometimes you will find me a little bit different because I will move from right to left and then from left to right at a pretty fast speed. At that time, people on the street often looked at me with strange eyes, like looking at a psychopath, but over time I got used to this, so I didn't feel uncomfortable anymore. Many people find it strange and curious, sometimes they ask what I'm doing, but I can't tell them. I have to hide what's going on. My problem here is, I have a pair of eyes that are not like ordinary people. I can see things that others cannot see with my own eyes. These eyes of mine are not born like they are now. They just have been like this ever since I encountered something in my younger years. When I was 17 years old, I contracted an extraordinary disease, which suddenly came to me with no warning that it would come. I remember that day, while they were in class, standing on the podium doing homework, I suddenly fainted, causing the whole class to panic. Not long after I fainted, I was taken to the hospital by the teacher. After going to the emergency room, I started having a high fever again. The high fever lasted for several days, and I was always in a semi-conscious state. The doctors at the hospital checked me and prescribed me medicine several times, but my fever didn't go away, and they still couldn't diagnose and test clearly what I had. The symptoms made the doctors a bit confused and worried, and my parents were also confused. But fortunately and strangely, except for the high fever that didn't go away, I didn't have any other symptoms. The high fever lasted for a few more days, then suddenly withdrew. Although I no longer had a fever, the doctors still did not send me home but kept me in the hospital for a while to monitor the situation, and they were afraid that the fever would suddenly recur. So I stayed stupid in the hospital for a few more days. When I woke up, I felt a bit weak from being in the hospital bed for a few days, but other than that, I was fine, with no other symptoms. When I was a little more awake, I got out of bed and walked out of the hospital room to take a few laps to relax my muscles. Lying in bed all day is really boring. I was planning on going for a walk in the hospital corridors a few times. The hospital is always crowded. There is the doctor, the nurse, the patient, and the patient's family. The smell of antiseptic and medicine mixed together are penetrated my nose, making me a little uncomfortable. I walked around a few times, looked a few times. Suddenly I was going to a particular part when I stopped a bit, and suddenly I saw some strange people in the crowd. The strange people I spoke of, paced back and forth in the corridor like a shadow, surrounded by a cloud of black smoke, and inside of them, there were illusory. The people around didn't seem to notice their existence. This made me feel quite strange and a little bit scared. I was looking at them when one of them passed me. This person looks so blurry, even when this person comes close to me and I can't see their face clearly. Even when that person went a little further away, I saw the vague figure covered in black smoke walking through the wall. When the other person walked through the wall and disappeared, I felt a bit dizzy, my mind stalled for a few seconds. I couldn't believe my eyes anymore. I was dumbfounded for a moment, then ran to the wall and watched it, then reached out and touched the wall. This wall is definitely normal, nothing out of the ordinary. Boy, open your eyes wide and look up at me. I felt panic and ran to the doctor's room to treat me. I told the doctor everything I had just seen. After listening, he said he suspected that my recent high fever had affected my optic nerve, so he referred me to an ophthalmologist. The ophthalmologist did a series of vision tests with me, which he examined very closely. 
It doesn't matter, and it's probably because my friend is overdoing it or because he's been taking too much medicine lately, so that's why. After a thorough examination, the ophthalmologist made sure that there was nothing wrong with my eyes. As for what I saw, he assumed it was a side effect of the drug, causing me to hallucinate. Although the doctor said my eyes were normal, this new symptom delayed my discharge time, and the doctors told me to stay a few more days until it was fine and then go out. The next few days at the hospital, besides eating and sleeping, most of the time I lay on the hospital bed and stared at the ceiling boringly. One night, I kept tossing and turning and couldn't sleep. So I went out of the hospital room and stood hugging me to watch the night view for solace. That day, I remember standing hugging the railing and catching the cold night wind, and at the same time looking at the night view outside, suddenly a strange feeling arose in my heart. This strange sensation made it difficult for me to breathe, and a chill ran down my spine. Then, I leaned over a bit and saw a little girl who appeared out of nowhere quietly passing me. This little girl caught my attention. It was 11 o'clock in the evening, that little girl appeared very quietly, in this secluded corridor, I heard no sound from this appearance at all. Another thing is that her figure is rather vague. She looks exactly like the strange people I saw a few days ago. That little girl just quietly passed me and went further, but I didn't hear a single sound. At that time I was a bit skeptical and wondered. Maybe the ophthalmologist diagnosed me wrong. Or not? Perhaps not only my eyesight but also my hearing problems. While I was dumbfounded and wondering, the girl had already come to a corner of the corridor. I had been in the hospital for a while, so I knew that there is a stair that led to the top floor behind the corner. This girl must have intended to go up to the top floor of the hospital. Although I was a little scared and felt something was wrong, at the same time, I felt more curious. I followed the girl. I quickly let go of my steps and caught up with her. I saw her open the door and walk up the stairs to the top floor. I continued to follow her. That little girl still walked up the stairs without making a sound. I doubted if she would notice me following, and then I answered myself no because she kept walking at a steady pace and never looked back. I saw the little girl open the door and enter the rooftop. Suddenly there was a fear and anxiety that came over me that I couldn't explain. I paused at the steps below the door to reassure myself a bit. After my breathing calmed down a bit, I felt a little worried for her, and now I took a few more steps to reach the door. I tried to go in here before, that time the door was locked. I heard that usually the door here is always locked like that, but I don't know why the door to the rooftop is open today. I put my hand over the door and went in. The sky not very bright tonight, the light on the rooftop is not good, making my vision limited. But fortunately, the rooftop area is not too big. I looked around a bit and saw the little girl from before, beside her was a woman. That woman was as fuzzy as the little girl. That strange woman was holding a baby in her arms and standing talking to the other girl. When I looked at the woman, a feeling of insecurity kept coming over me. Even though I was not far from them, I could only see the woman moving her mouth and the little girl standing there listening, with her eyes blank, I couldn't hear the other woman saying anything, and the two of them didn't seem to notice me either, it's really strange. After the woman stood talking to her for a while, I saw the little girl climb up the railing of the rooftop, I saw that scene, and my heart jumped. This unexpected move of hers made me break out in a cold sweat. Didn't that woman incite her to jump off a building? I was scared and stood dumbfounded for a long time. I saw the little girl already standing on the railing and about to jump off. Hey, girl. Danger. Downward. I didn't have time to think and analyze and think more about this situation. I quickly ran towards her and shouted to stop her. The distance from where I was to them was a little bit, but why did I find it too long? 
Luckily, just as she was about to jump off, I ran over and wrapped my arms around her. But something happened that made me very surprised because I just hugged her. I felt my hand almost touched her then suddenly my hand was empty, like hugging into the air. The momentum of the hug just now was quite strong, causing me to lose half of my body forward and hang between the railing of the terrace. I fell forward and almost fell from above. I was scared to my heart's content. I tried to regain my composure and stepped back, away from the place that made my heart stop. By the time I got away from that place for a bit, that's when I remembered the woman holding the baby earlier. I forced myself to stay calm and tried to find the figure of the woman holding the baby. I looked behind me and saw that the woman was already approaching the door. I saw her floating on the ground, and I couldn't even see her feet. When she came to the door, she turned and stared at me fiercely. The clouds had cleared away now, and I could clearly see her and the child looking at her hands. Their faces weren't human, their green faces with their eyes wide open were terrifying, just like the evil spirits I've seen in TV dramas. After glaring at me, she carried the baby flying through the door, and then the door was closed with great force. I felt scared and dared not stay on the rooftop any longer. I staggered back to the ward and got into bed, covered with blankets. The following day, when a nurse came to check on me, I took the opportunity to ask her about the girl I met yesterday. I described her appearance for a while and wondered if there was such a girl in this hospital or not. The nurse said that in the hospital, there was a little girl like the one I described. Last night the little girl had a critical illness and seemed unable to survive, but fortunately, she was finally okay and out of danger. I asked the time when her condition was critical. The nurse replied that the time was exactly the same as the time when I saw her, so yesterday must be her spirit. Fortunately, I was in time to save the girl. But the woman who was holding the baby, I didn't ask. I stayed in the hospital for two more days when the doctor finally allowed me to leave the hospital. I told my parents about the strange events that I encountered while in the hospital, they were worried, so they helped me find a parapsychologist to come and see for me. Mr. Simmon, did my son see something unclean? The teacher came and asked me once about what had happened. After he asked and finished checking, my father worriedly asked him how I was. My son has seen things that other people can't see. The moment he has a fever is also the beginning of his days of seeing things that normal human eyes cannot see. Mr. Simmon said all the things I saw were ghosts. Mr. Simmon, please help my son. When my parents heard that I saw a ghost, they panicked and begged Mr. Simmon tried to help me. Oh dear, calm down. The boy ruined the scheme of that witch. Last night, the witch was going to make the little girl's soul jump from the rooftop. Her soul would disappear, and her son would take over the girl's body. But unfortunately, her work was spoiled by your son. Now we have to take him to a holy place to hide for a few days. It turned out that if I hadn't made it in time last night, the following days would have been terrible days for the girl's family. Mr. Simmons says I messed up the ghost, so it will definitely come looking for me. He asked my parents to take me to a temple because there is God's presence in the temple. The ghost will not be able to harm me. After a few days, it will give up. My parents saw that the situation was so severe, so they decided to listen to Mr. Simmon, take me to a temple, and send me there for a few days. After a few days, Mr. Simmon and his parents came to the temple to pick me up. He said that the problem of the witch was all right. Then he gave me a pair of black glasses and told me to wear them, put them on so that you won't see those unclean things. But at the same time, he said that the moment I begin to see the ghost is like fate setting a mission for me, so I shouldn't try to avoid it. At first, I wore those dark glasses every day, but then I opened them now and then and secretly looked at people from another world. 
At first, I was a bit scared, but later I got used to it, and I gradually learned to accept my mission, says Mr. Simmons.